seats. Council members, please take your seats. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Clear the center aisle, please. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for your patience. I think Attorney General Letitia James might have taken the microphone with her as a souvenir, but I'll regavel in. Good afternoon and welcome to the charter meeting of January 9th, 2019. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am the Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy New Year, everyone, and we will now do roll call. Adams. Present. Happy New Year. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Gradenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Miller. Present. Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez, Rose, Here. Rosenthal, 
Salamanca. Present. Rodriguez. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum and we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Scott N. Bolton of Congregation Or Zerua, which translates to, light is the source is sown for the righteous. They are located at 127 East 82nd Street in Manhattan. Please rise. Happy New Year. That was my microphone test. L'chaim. <laughs> this Hebrew word means to life. We first are connected through the bonds of sacred life. To life and the life of this city and the life of each and every individual in this room. We turn to the master mixer of stardust and light from infinity. We turn to the greater maker of purposes and ask for blessings, triumphs, achievements for our city, for this council in the year 2019. May this leadership cadre of unique souls come together in a unity of purpose to accomplish towering achievements for our city. May their every endeavor to enhance neighborhoods, districts, boroughs, our city, their individual lives or others, lead to blessing and be guided by your light. O say shalom, maker of peace, pour out your blessing on all the officials who occupy themselves in good faith with the public needs. May the pursuit of peace among brothers and sisters and members of all races, faiths, and creed, lead us to realize inspired chapters in our city's life. Instruct these leaders from your deepest wells of wisdom. Spark their souls, reveal your presence to inspire, enable them to understand principles of justice so that peace and tranquility, happiness and freedom might never turn away from our city. Wise one, source of life breath, plant among us the answer to mechayenu, machasdenu. What are our lives? How have we merited to be alive at this moment? Know that we are your faithful servants, proving that justice and peace will prevail. Fulfill the yearning of all people of our city who wish to speak proudly of its honor. Let us work together to find solutions to strife and systems breakdowns. Make us instruments who repair injustice. We are blessed this day to stand together, to ask the one who capacitates leaders to help us realize our greatest potentials for our lives and for the lives of all the inhabitants of our dear city, cause to dwell among all her citizens friendship and freedom. Our destinies are intertwined, and our hopes are aligned. God, give us strength, and let us say, amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Bolton, for that very powerful New Year's invocation, certainly to set the council on the right track as we handle very complex and challenging issues ahead of us. I'd like to ask Council Member Powers to please spread the invocation on record. Thank you, and Happy New Year, everybody. Today we were joined by Rabbi Scott Bolton, the spiritual leader of Congregation Or Zerua on the Upper East Side, Manhattan, located in my district, but importantly, Council Member Kalos is rabbi. Um, he also served as the head of school for two Solomon Schechter Day Schools in New Jersey and New York, 
was ordained from the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies at the American Jewish University and has served on the Hillel Board at American University, on the International Advisory Board of the Auschwitz Institute for Peace and Reconciliation, as well as the Board of Merkaz USA, in addition to the Board of the American Zionist Movement. It took me a long time to say, he's very accomplished. We are very lucky to have him today, today <clears throat> with, uh, along with all the work I just named uh, and his congregation. He's also proud to be among the sponsoring religious institutions and clergy of the New York Common Pantry. I know an institution that we fund and we support very much here in the, in the city council. Um, we, I really want to thank him for being here today and his ongoing work in my district and along the Upper East Side and his support of great organizations serving the city. With that being said, I want to turn it over to uh, Councilmember Kalos to say a few words as well. Thank you, Councilmember Powers, for spreading the invocation of the council and for the supportive remarks for Rabbi Bolton. I'm a member of Congregation Or Zerua, a traditional egalitarian and participatory congregation where members are treated equally regardless of gender or income and it's participatory. This is the first time I've heard the rabbi speak without an interruption by the congregation, uh, so please don't get used to it. I've had the privilege of meeting Rabbi Scott Bolton and his wife, Rabbi Amy Bolton, and the rest of his beautiful family as we hosted him as our guest rabbi for a Shabbaton and hired him right away. Now, my wife is very selective, or so she tells me every day that she selected me and following my proposal, uh, Rabbi Scott Bolton was the only rabbi she would have marry us. And uh, as she said in her Russian accent to him, he had 10 minutes to do all the Jewish stuff. And he flew down to St. Thomas to marry us and most recently helped us uh, give a Hebrew name to our daughter. And I think what is most important to me is uh, following Yom Kippur where we had fasted for 28 days and all anyone wants to do is get something in their mouths. I came to him and I, having reflected and I said, what can we do about the homeless crisis in our city. This was back in 2015. And he said, we should all come to the table, all the religious institutions, nonprofits, and form a task force, the Eastside Task Force for Homeless Outreach and Services, to actually build supportive housing in the neighborhood, uh, regardless if it costs him his pulpit, costs me my job, what have you. And we did it. We've been able to build supportive housing. We will continue to build supportive housing. And we're just so lucky to have him in our congregation and in our community. Uh, and so thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your very personal experiences um, about us with Rabbi Bolton. We thank you so much for your uh, prayers today and all of your well wishes for this council. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now have the adoption of the minutes by Council Member Constantinides. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 28th, 2018 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, Council Member. And we will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. There are none. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M, excuse me, M124 through M126. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I ask for a roll call vote on today's land use call-ups. Land use call-ups only is what we are now voting on. Adams. Aye on all. Ambry Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Cornegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Si. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Jonai. Aye on all. Grodenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Yes. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Rivera. 
Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye and all. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye and all. Williams. Uh, permission to vote unanimous consent. Permission granted. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with the pride of uh, passing on my 54th piece of legislation today, I vote aye and all. You're welcome, and who's counting? <laughs> Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Happy New Year, everyone. I want to thank you all for being here with us on this Wednesday at our first full meeting of 2019, our charter meeting. We have a busy agenda ahead of us, but we are beginning today on a sad note. On Sunday night, Probationary firefighter Stephen Pollard died while responding to a car accident in Brooklyn. He fell trying to help two injured drivers while crossing the Belt Parkway's Mill Basin Bridge. He was only 30 years old and he had just cleared his FDNY probationary period. This is a tragedy for his family and for our city. We lost a good man at the start of his career. I also want to acknowledge the loss of NYPD Detective Thomas Lyons, another 9-11 first responder who died from pancreatic cancer that he developed at Ground Zero. Detective Lyons was 51 years old. In recent days, we lost Luis Garden Acosta, the president and founder of El Puente. Luis was a champion for the Latino and African American communities and a pioneer in human rights activism. I'm proud of his work and the work of El Puente, and I, can, I think I speak for all of us when I say he will be greatly missed. He made the lives better for so many people, and we are a richer city and nation because of his efforts. Two dedicated public servants also passed since our last full meeting. William Thompson Sr., the first African-American state senator from Brooklyn, died at 94 years old in December. Mr. Thompson was a lifelong dedicated public servant who first served in the U.S. Army during World War II before serving as a state senator and a member of this body, the city council, and a longtime judge. He was a trailblazer who left his mark on our city. To his son and many of our friend Bill, his daughter Gail, and all of his loved ones, I send my deepest condolences and best wishes. We also lost Judge Seymour Boyers, who passed away at 92 years old this past weekend. Sai served as a council member at large, representing the Borough of Queens in the 1960s. He lived a life devoted to advocacy and education, and he'll be missed. To his wife, his four children, and his 11 grandchildren, I send my best wishes, condolences, and my gratitude for his service. I'd like to ask everyone here to please rise and take a moment of silence in memory of Detective Lyons, Firefighter Pollard, Luis Garden Acosta, the Honorable William Thompson Sr., and the Honorable Seymour Boyers. Thank you. Before we jump into our docket today, we have uh, one more New Yorker who deserves some extra recognition because it falls on our state of today. Today is the birthday of our amazing friend and council member from 
Corona, the cat saver himself, a champion for students, immigrants, and New Yorkers, Francisco Moya. Happy birthday, Francisco. Don't shave, you'll look a lot younger. Uh, now diving into today's agenda, the Council will vote on the following finance items. Introduction 1226, which will establish the Throgs Neck Business Improvement District in Councilmember Mark Jonai's district in the Bronx. Introduction 1227, which will expand the Hudson Square Business Improvement District in my district in Manhattan. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Stephanie Ruiz and Noah Brick. Moving on, the Council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. Introduction 1299, sponsored by Councilmember Jumani Williams, would clarify for the purposes of enforcing prohibitions against unauthorized commuter van services, the definitions of for hire vehicles and commuter van do not include a public bus service operating pursuant to a contract with any state or local government. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, James DiGiovanni and Elliot Lynn. Next, we're going to vote on introduction 828, sponsored by our Government Operations Chair, Fernando Cabrera, which would require the Department of Records and Information Services, Doris, to list all of its reports required by local law on its website, including relevant information such as their frequency, the law to which they are being responsive to, and the agency or agencies responsive. It will also provide users with access to every past report of that type received by Doris. And if an agency fails to submit a required report on time, Doris would request the report from an agency and post that request in lieu of the report on its website until the agency transmits the report. Finally, this legislation will require that reports be sent to Doris electronically rather than by hand. This sounds very geeky, wonky, uh, technical. This is actually very, very important because so much of the work we do here at the, here at the council are reporting bills, and many of us wonder if those bills go into a black hole somewhere and never see the light of day. So our chair's bill is going to require that they post these reports on their website so the public can see it, so that we can see it, the press can see it, and if they don't produce the report they're required to produce, then they need to post the request that was made of them, which would be embarrassing for that agency if they weren't responsive. So I want to thank you, uh, Fernando, for getting this done. It's very important for the work we do, and I want to thank the staff who's worked on this, Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Emily Forgione, and Zach Harris. The council will vote on introduction 728, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Espinal, which would require a temporary program for the resolution of outstanding judgments resulting from awning sign violations. It would also establish a two-year moratorium on the issuance of additional awning sign violations, as well as an interagency task force uh, to explore issues related to awning signs and education related to bringing existing awning signs into compliance. This bill would also require the Department of Buildings to provide a report to the City Council containing information about awning sign violations and establish a waiver of work without a permit penalties issued in connection with awning signs since December 28, 2017 and going forward. This was of great concern for business owners across the city, so I'm glad that this bill is being voted on today. This is an example of us being responsive to community needs and giving a helping hand to businesses that are the lifeblood of our city. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, specifically Austin Branford. Finally, we're going to vote on the Student Transportation Oversight Package, the STOP Package. Seven bills, Grudenchik, seven bills that are aimed at improving our city's school bus system. This has received a lot of attention, and rightly so. When parents put their children on a school bus, we are the guardians of that child, and we have an obligation to take care of them. This past fall, we had a lot of problems that caused uh, a lot of stress to parents. Quiet this in the chamber. This was related to the storm we had in November. And I'm sorry that that happened and that parents were scared and could not find their children. Uh, this package is an attempt to make sure it doesn't happen again. The primary goal of this package is to keep our children safe, to provide a level of transparency for parents and children. And I'm proud to support it. I specifically want to thank our education chair who has worked on this 
uh, tirelessly and vocally uh, and has very, been very smart at how to handle this package. I want to thank Mark Traeger, the chair of our education committee, for his incredible work on this. First in the package is Introduction 89, sponsored by Councilmember Andy King, which required that the Department of Education report in the average length of time scheduled for school bus routes in each community school district. The bill will also require that the DOE share actual school bus transportation times as recorded by GPS trackers with the City Council. That information will need to be shared. Introduction 451, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require the DOE to distribute a school bus ridership guide in hard copy and electronically to all students and parents. This guide would include a description of eligibility for school bus services, what the services entail, information for parents and students living in temporary housing and students in foster care, and the responsibility of students and parents using DOE school bus services. I want to thank Danny, our finance chair and former education chair. Introduction 926, which I sponsored, would require the Department of Education to share with parents and post on its website how parents can file a complaint about a school bus employee, the process by which the department investigates such a complaint, and the possible results of such an investigation. This bill also requires the DOE share the protocols for school bus services and in inclement weather emergencies. Introduction 929, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, would require the Department of Education to report on the calls and complaints received from parents and guardians about school bus services, the investigations DOE opened into school bus employees, and the number of those investigations that were substantiated, and a description of outcomes taken by DOE in the event of a substantiated investigation. We'll also vote on two pieces of legislation, two very important pieces of legislation as part of this package, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos. Introduction 1099 would require every school bus to be equipped with a GPS tracking device and require that the DOE give authorized parents and guardians access to the real-time location of their child's school bus. This bill would also require each bus to be equipped with a two-way communication device for allowing communications with the bus operator. And his second bill, introduction 1148, would require the Department of Education report on how school bus routes are determined, goals for time limits for bus routes, and any other goals related to school bus services. This bill would require that the Department of Education share school bus routes with parents and guardians at least 15 days before the start of the school year and report a list of school bus vendors who have completed a dry run of their route as required by their contract and those bus vendors who are not in compliance with their contractual obligations to complete dry runs of those routes before the school year starts. The bill would require that the Department of Education let parents know daily if their child's bus is late arriving or departing school so parents have some sense when their child is going to get home. Finally, introduction 1173, sponsored by our education chair again, Councilmember Mark Traeger, would require that the Department of Education report on the department's school bus services, including the vendors providing school bus transportation to students, the number of vehicles and employees used by such vendors, the number of bus routes and transportation sites in use, the number of students using school bus transportation, including the types of students, and the categories of students who are eligible for DOE transportation services. This bill would also require DOE to report on school bus delays and no-shows, and subcontractors are included in this as well. I want to thank the incredible staff that has worked on this package for a very long time in a very meticulous way. Beth Gollum, James Sabuti, Ala Masawi, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, and Jeff Baker. That is it for today's agenda. Usually the charter meeting of the council, we don't vote on anything. We come, we say hi, we gavel in, we gavel out. There is a huge queue of bills and we're trying to move people's bills. So I wanted to get through these important bills today so we can keep moving forward with everyone's priorities and start off uh, 2019 in a very productive and good way. So happy new year, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your collegiality and for the work you do every single day. I look forward to working with all of you uh, in this auspicious year. Welcome to 2019. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much for your leadership. And we will now move into discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. None. 
Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Education, intros 89C, 451B, 926B, 929B, 1099A, 1148B, and 1173B school bus transportation package. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, intros 1226 and 1227, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled to General Orders. Report of the Committee on Four Hire Vehicles, intro 1299A, Unauthorized Commuter Vans. Amen, amended and coupled to General Orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intro 828A, Online List of Required Reports. Amended and coupled to General Orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, intro 728B, Sign Violations. Amended and coupled to General Orders. On the General Order Calendar, intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders, and at this time, I am asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Happy New Year, everyone. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Highest commendations to all of those who have bills that are being passed today, particularly on the uh, transportation. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Uh, proudly, I on all, uh, we, we hit a home run with this uh, school bus package. Brennan. I on all, happy new year. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to give a special thanks to Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Zachary Harris, and uh, my own staff, uh, Claire McLevain, uh, my bill, uh, 828A, that put a tremendous amount of work on this bill. Uh, and help me to bring clarity as to what was needed in this bill. And also I want to congratulate all of my colleagues uh, regarding the bus bill. It's a tremendous bill. It's amazing. Uh, and it's going to bring a lot of peace and tranquility and serenity to our parents who are ever uh, conscious about uh, the safety of our children. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chin. I don't know. Cohen. Uh, Madam Majority, the permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I too just want to really uh, congratulate uh, my colleagues on the school bus package. I think it's an important package of bills. Uh, I think it's really impressive how quickly we turned them around, uh, and I think it was uh, sorely needed. So I just really want to acknowledge that because I think it was our chair, Mark Traeger, uh, who did an enormous amount of work as well as the bill sponsors to get us to this point. So with that, I'm going to vote aye on all. Thank you. Konstantinidis. Happy New Year to everyone, and I on all. Carnegie. I on all. Deutsch. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to uh, wish everyone a happy and healthy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo uh, to all my colleagues. And I just want to um, speak briefly about uh, intro 1099A, which I'm a uh, prime co-sponsor on, uh, that would require the yellow buses to have two-way communication as well as a GPS system. So working for my predecessor back uh, in 2000, Council Member Mike Nelson, where this bill was originally uh, introduced, that's 18 years ago, uh, it first came in, um, into fruition when that bill was introduced, uh, was when Council Member Nelson was driving up Flatbush Avenue and saw a disabled yellow bus on the side of the road with school children uh, that had no communication, the bus driver had zero communication whatsoever to contact anyone. So um, that's when the bill was introduced. It was introduced a total of five times, first in 2000, then in 2002, then in the 2005 it was added to two-way radio, it was added the GPS tracking system. It was again reintroduced in 2006 and once again in 2010. Uh, the previous two speakers did not allow it to come for a vote, and that is frankly because uh, my predecessor did not support their role as, uh, to become speaker, and they put um, politics before our school children, and I just want to say that we are fortunate to have Speaker Corey Johnson that puts our school children first and does not play old school politics. And that is why uh, this bill is now coming for a vote. So I want to thank um, um, Councilmember Ben Kalos for his strong leadership on uh, introducing, reintroducing this bill. So thank you, uh, colleague. And I also want to commend uh, my colleague, uh, Chair of the Education Committee, Councilmember Mark Traeger. Thank you. I vote aye and all. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch. Diaz. 
Permission to split my vote? Permission granted, Reverend Diaz. Thank you, Madam Chair Lane. Uh, I'm voting yes on all except Resolution 716. And the reason why I'm voting no on that resolution is that because it is a resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to adopt all of the policy recommendations of the mayor's sexual health education task force and provide comprehensive sexual health education on a regular basis across all grade level, meaning pre-K, meaning kindergarten. So ladies and gentlemen, we this city not only are now not only are promoting the use of heroin in the in the public parts by giving out her herringes and, and all kinds of those. Now we are give extensive, comprehensive sexual health education on a regular basis across all grade level, the children in pre-K and K in kindergarten. Uh, and this is what we're going to. So I cannot vote for this. I am voting yes on all of it, on, all of, on, on the rest. So Madame Charlady and all of you, my colleagues, Happy New Year, but this 716 resolution is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Reverend Diaz. And as always, you're ahead of us. And so we will be speaking on resolutions at a later time. But thank you for being proactive. Drum. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 728B. On that, I vote no. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted, Councilmember Espinal. Uh, thank you, Miss um, Cumbo. Today marks the culmination of nearly two years of hard work and advocacy. I am grateful to my fellow council members, Councilmember Mark Jonai, Brannon, Ku, Menchaca, Yeager, and Holden, the chair of, of the Housing and Buildings Committee, uh, Cornegy, and Speaker Johnson for all of their effort in pushing this forward. We began putting together this integral piece of legislation when businesses in my district suddenly found themselves with $6,000 fines for signs they had up on their businesses for years. Since November 2017, there have been over 2,000 sign violations reported 301 across the five boroughs. The fine combined with the price tag of a new sign can be devastating to a business's bottom line. As a sudden uptick in violations came to the awareness of my colleagues, we quickly worked together to institute a two-year moratorium on any sign violations. Businesses will not have to feel the burden of these unjust fines while we work on the comprehensive reform to end this unjust practice. In addition to this moratorium, any small business that has yet to pay these fines will be given complete financial relief. There will be reduced permit fees for hanging new signs and a task force with small business owners, city agencies, and chambers of commerce to investigate any predatory practices that might be going on and compile strategic reform to prevent this injustice from ever happening again. Uh, with that said, I also want to thank all of the advocates uh, who have been part of this effort and all the business owners who stood with us uh, day by day on the City Hall, uh, in City Hall, to have these conversations and make this bill happen. So thank you all. I vote aye on all. Thank you for your leadership. Eugene. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. Wishing all of my colleagues a happy, healthy, productive, and hopefully peaceful new year. I want to congratulate uh, Councilman Espinal on intro 728. It goes a long way in helping our micro businesses, small mom and pop business owners who have been allowed to experience uh, harassment by weaponizing 311 and extortion by sign installers at the cost of tens of thousands of dollars. This is a great way to start off the new year and I'm so proud that we were able to work on this bill with so many of my colleagues and stakeholders to make sure that we won all the rights. On intro 1227, uh, Hudson Square bid, congratulations speaker, and intro 1226, as a member, as the creation of the Throgs Neck Bid Association, which is in my district. 
I'm so excited for that area as we create opportunities to promote the small business corridors throughout the city and invite all of you to visit the bids citywide. Thank you. I vote all on aye. Thank Gordon. you, and thank you for your leadership. Gordenchik. Small amount of time to explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader. Small amount of time granted. I, I just want to uh, thank uh, Chair Traeger and the Speaker for shepherding through this package of bills relating to school buses. Um, I represent a district where uh, mass transit is two people in the car, and um, it's a problem, uh, especially I have five standalone District 75 schools, so that is also a, a great burden on the parents of these young people as we strive to give them the best possible education. Um, in Eastern Queens. So I thank you all for sponsoring this legislation, which will, I know will go a long way to ensuring uh, the tranquility of many, many thousands of families in this great city of ours. I also uh, remember today Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who in six days from now uh, would have been 90 years old. And um, I remind my colleagues of that, although I don't think too many of them need reminding. And I will, as I always do on his birthday, um, watch his most famous speech, the March on Washington, I Have a Dream speech. It's the best 18 minutes I spend every year. And That's lastly, I, uh, I, with that, I, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam. Public Thank advocate you. or whatever we're calling you today. Majority Leader yes, today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was trying to give you a pay raise. <laughs> That's for another meeting. Holden. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I also want to thank Councilmember Espinal for this uh, great bill, Intro 728B, that protects small businesses. They were hit with thousands of dollars worth of fines over the years. It's about time that um, uh, everybody stood up uh, to the uh, unfair administration with these uh, fines and the billing department. So I want to thank, again, my, all my colleagues, and especially Councilmember Espinal, for this great bill. Thank you. Aye on all. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Happy New Year. I'm Councilmember Ben Kalis. I want to thank our speaker and public advocate, Corey Johnson, uh, the chair of the Education Committee, Mark Traeger, uh, the former Education Committee Council, Laura Popa, who initially drafted one of these bills, the current Committee Council, Beth Golub, who updated it for the 21st century, Andrea Vasquez, Alama Sawai, uh, for all of their work on the Student Transportation Oversight Package, the STOP Act. I'd also like to thank the co-sponsor of Introduction 1099, Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, who started working on this back in 2000 as a staffer to then Councilmember Mike Nelson. Every school year starts with nightmares of children stuck on buses for hours leaving parents worrying, where are their children? The annual bus nightmares reached crisis levels in November when winter storm Avery left young children who received special education on a bus in the snow for more than 10 hours. As a new parent, when Jennifer Reynoso called me and told me that she didn't know where her child was at 9.30, I saw my daughter mm. on that bus, and we worked with City Hall, the mayor's office. We had to call the police, the NYPD, to rescue that child, and that's a huge problem. We now have legislation that takes lessons from cities like Boston, where parents get bus routes weeks ahead of school year in time to challenge routes, as well as from the chancellor's home city of Houston, where since 2015, parents have had access to GPS app so that they know where the buses are. Intro 1099A follows year, follows, requires that the DOE to provide real-time GPS location data for parents to look at, at their phones so they can track when the buses are coming to pick up and drop off their kids and know where they are. 140, 1148 requires DOE to give the bus Thank routes Thank you, Council Member Kalos. One moment for one sentence. Uh, Intro 1148 requires DOA to give bus routes to families 15 days prior to the first day of school with time to challenge the routes and to do dry runs without children on board. With this package, I believe we will be able to finally Thank deliver you. children home safely from school. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kalos. And how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Thank La you. Lanceman. 
Lander. Vote aye and request permission to vote aye on all land use call ups. Permission granted. I vote aye on those as well. Thank you very much. Happy Thank New you. Year, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote, Madam um, Majority Leader Lori Combo. Permission granted. Thank you. Feliz Año Nuevo, everyone. Uh, I am really excited to support intro 728B. Uh, you already heard from the prime sponsor, Espinal, and the rest of the team that has really cultivated, I think, one of the fastest bills I've seen move on the floor here at the City Council, and with good reason. Since late 2018, hundreds of businesses in New York City, mostly small and mostly immigrant-owned, have received violations from proper signage the violations come attached with a civil penalty of $6,000, which is incredibly exorbitant and must be paid even if the violation is resolved. For small businesses that can barely afford to make rent month to month, the violations are doing more than taking down signs. They are closing up shops. All across my district and those of my colleagues who have co-sponsored this bill, small businesses are taking down their signs in fear of receiving the violations, which is not only creating <coughs> whole avenues of what feels like and constituents have called around blighted streets, but setting them up for further violations for not having signage or other violations should that they put up new signs without being licensed by the hangers or without licensed hangers. So we need to put a stop to this bleeding by halting the DOB from issuing more violations or collecting these penalties. Intro 728B does that with a two-year moratorium. This will give us a time as a council to review the regulations surrounding businesses from top to bottom so that we not only prevent this situation from happening again, and this is not the first time that this council ha or the city council has dealt with this issue, but actually change the way we relate to small businesses. We shouldn't be issuing a penalty of 6,000 for first time violations. It should be a warning or citation. So we have more work to do. There are a lot of opportunities that we have to build relationships with our immigrant businesses. And this bill is that first step. I look forward to working with my colleagues to continue to heal our small business corridors. And with that, Feliz Año Nuevo. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Aye on all. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Powers. Aye on all. Reynoso. Aye on all. Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Rose. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, I just want to congratulate my, uh, my, co my colleagues and the co the sponsors of the school bus legislation. Um, as chair of the youth committee, we often pass legislation to protect um, our young people and keep them safe. And I am really excited that we saw the need to have legislation to protect our young people on the buses. It's long overdue, and it's just common sense legislation. And I thank everyone for putting this package together, and I vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Aye and all. Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to briefly say that this is an example of effective and responsive government. Uh, at the start of the school year, we heard and fielded calls from parents and families about unacceptable delays, non-pickups, uh, so many questions, very few answers. Uh, this council held hearings. The uh, speaker actually came to the hearing, listened, spoke very, very powerfully as well. We met with families, we met with bus companies, we met with vendors, we met with a lot of folks, many state labor, a lot of stakeholders. We worked together on this package of legislation that I think is the most comprehensive package of legislation uh, that impacts student transportation system ever, ever passed by this body. We're introducing the system, which is a $1.2 billion industry to the 21st century. There will be greater oversight, greater accountability uh, to better serve the children of New York. So, uh, Speaker, I want to thank you and your team and your office for your leadership for getting this done. I want to thank all my colleagues and their support. We have amazing, amazing staff in the City Council that was negotiating this bill even during the holiday break up to New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. 
So I want to thank them for their great work and my staff as well. And I congratulate all my colleagues on their bills. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ulrich. Aye on all. Valone. Uh, moment to explain my vote. Permission granted. <laughs> thank you, Majority Leader. Happy New Year, everyone. And I want to thank Chair Traeger and everyone who worked on these school safety bills, and especially with the bus legislation. Uh, I think we were all tired of the first day of school and the first day after Labor Day of hearing that whether it's a chancellor or a commissioner was unexpected uh, for what happened on the first day of school. It's no longer an excuse. There must be accountability. As a parent and everyone that's in this room, uh, I think we were all disgusted as to what happened this year with the buses. And this package comes right to the heart of it. Uh, very appreciated and proud to stand with all the council members on these bills. Great work. Speaker Johnson, thank you for pushing me so quickly. Uh, thank you to you. Here's to another great year working together. Happy New Year, everyone. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ben Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, today, the Council is passing an incredibly wise package of legislation uh, to protect the children who ride New York City school buses. Um, these, are, these are smart bills. These are common sense bills, as Chair Traeger said. Um, in particular, I want to call uh, the attention of New Yorkers to Intro 1099, uh, sponsored by Councilman Kalos uh, and uh, Chair Traeger. This is a very, very smart bill. And uh, I don't say that about many pieces of legislation. Uh, this is incredibly, well, okay. Um, this is an incredibly wise thing to do. This is a good thing that we're doing for the parents of New Yorkers, of kids who get on our buses and parents simply don't know what happens uh, until the child arrives in school. There are schools in my district that have actually invested money out of their own budgets, private schools, to, for their own fleet and I've seen the technology where they can track the buses as they move through the route and know exactly to the second where the buses are. So again, uh, to Councilman Kalos, uh, this is a wise bill. Uh, Chair Traeger, thank you very much for your work in getting this done. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 728 on which I abstain. Thank you. Matteo. Aye on all. Combo. I just want to thank Councilmember Traeger and all of those who worked on this particular transportation um, as it pertains to safety for our young people as a new mom. I feel so much more at peace knowing that my child will be safer as a result of the legislation that we've passed and parents all throughout the city of New York. And I also want to thank uh, Councilmember Espinal and Councilmember Joni for their collaboration and partnership. It was critical, particularly for so many small businesses, when we pass legislation to protect workers, it's so important that we continue to balance it with protections to protect our small businesses. So I proudly vote aye on all and thank all of my colleagues for this incredible package of legislation. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 728B, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention. The revised land use call-up vote is 47 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have introduction and reading of bills. All of the bills are referred to committee as indicated on everyone's agenda. We will now move into a discussion of resolutions. Are there any members that wish to speak on any of today's resolutions? Seeing none, we will now have uh, an opportunity to vote on our resolutions today. Resolution 540. Hold for one moment. I'm going to read Resolution 540 into the record. Resolution calling upon the New York State Education Department to require, implement, and enforce more extensive training and tracking of the training of school bus drivers and attendants who transport students with disabilities. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. 
Abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. If members have signed up for general discussion, we will now begin with council member, we'll begin with council member Kalos. Construction related injuries and deaths continue to rise for the fifth straight year to 744 injuries and 16 death deaths in the fiscal year 2018, approximately triple the 212 injuries and six deaths in fiscal year 2014, according to the mayor's management report as reported by city and state. Under proposed introduction 1322, co-prime sponsored by Civil Service and Labor Chair I. Danique Miller, affordable housing and economic development projects receiving city subsidies would be required to pay workers a prevailing wage, provide training in the classroom and on the job through apprenticeship coupled with transparency. Proposed introduction 1323 forces developers to disclose ownership interests, the revolving door with the city, violations, MWB status, and the planned workforce to the city council prior to, prior to seeking permission to build on city land or obtain millions in city subsidies. Uh, this information is already provided to HPD in their 37-page compliance package, and there's no reason why we shouldn't have it. I ask my colleagues to please uh, sponsor these important pieces of legislation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Kalos. We will now call on Councilmember Barron. I'm sorry, Councilmember Barron would like to go last. We will then, doesn't matter. Okay, we'll call on Councilmember Barron. Thank you, and I was just saying that I wanted my remarks in this section, not in the first section. I see. Thank you. Uh, greetings to all my colleagues, Happy New Year. I just wanna call attention to the passing of a dear friend and someone who was very vocal in the fight against police brutality, and that's Nicholas Haywood Sr. He passed on New Year's Eve, and he became known for his work fighting against police immorality, police uh, corruption, and police criminal activity, particularly as it relates to killing of unarmed civilians. His son, Nicholas Haywood Jr., was only 13 when he was shot. He was unarmed, and he was shot by an NYPD officer and that officer was never brought to justice. So I just wanted to put into the record that he has passed and that while he was here, he was a great fighter, he was a great advocate, not only for his son, but for all of those families who have been subjected to a loss of a loved one due to the criminal activity, criminal actions of NYPD with unarmed <coughs> children in particular. So I just wanted that to be noted, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We'll now have Council Member Reynoso followed by Council Member Menchaca. I wanna take the time to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for acknowledging the passing of Luis Garen Acosta, who was my mentor and did amazing work in our Southside district related to environmental justice and empowering of young people. Um, I was fortunate enough to be one of those young people that he took under his wing and I'm grateful for everything that he's taught me uh, and he will always be remembered. So again, just wanna thank Corey for acknowledging that. I'm also introducing a bill uh, related to the corrupt practices pre uh, present, present in our commercial sanitation industry. We have an issue related to sham unions or fake unions, and we have a bill that we are introducing today that will empower BIC to go after unions that have uh, bosses or executive level members that are uh, either have been indicted or criminal charges related to the uh, private sanitation industry. I'm looking forward to everyone's support. Um, and I want to close my statements there. Thank you. Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you. So uh, something we pride ourselves in a city that um, that we live in is that we take care of our immigrants and give everyone the dignity of being heard and understood no matter your preferred language. In the interest of making that true every New Yorker's interaction with city agencies, we passed Local Law 30 in 2017 to guarantee language access for all New Yorkers, making it a requirement for city agencies to provide their services in 10 of the city's most commonly spoken languages. However, back in, in October, I held a hearing on this language access requirement to review whether city agencies were living up to it. 
What we discovered was that many service providers on the ground reported clients who were not attended to by the city agencies with proper language access. Yet the city claimed it had not received any complaints on this issue. A review of the city's 311 data makes it almost impossible to confirm this claim since 311 personnel are not required to ask first what language a person needs before logging a complaint. LS8859 would change that, making such an ask standard procedure and then requiring 311 to track how many times a call is dropped when the question is asked. We need to have a means of holding the city accountable to provide language access. This is that first and critical step, and I urge you all to join me uh, by signing on as prime sponsors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. And as we close out today's meeting, um, I would be remiss if I also did not add to the remarks um, of Speaker Corey Johnson uh, in regards to Judge William C. Thompson, who is my predecessor. He passed away again on December 24, 2018, at the age of 19, in the, at the age of 94. He was a New York State Senator and Justice of the New York Supreme Court Appellate Division and father to New York City Controller Bill Thompson. He was on the City Council from 1969 to 1973, elected to the Supreme Court in 1974, and named Assistant Administrative Judge of the Supreme Court in Brooklyn and Staten Island in 1978. In 1980, he was the first black associate justice appointed to the appellate division of the Second Judicial Department of Brooklyn. Mr. Thompson was a founder with Robert F. Kennedy of the Bedford-Stuyvesant Restoration Corporation, of which he was also director, and the New York City Regional Director of the NAACP. 1970, when black residents accounted for about one-fourth of Brooklyn's population, Mr. Thompson became a leader of the party in the borough when he was elected chairman of the Kings County Democratic Committee. He is a leader and has been responsible for so many of the candidates across the city of New York, and particularly Brooklyn, being elected. Um, he sat counsel to me many times during my election and my campaigns. He will be greatly missed. He has been an icon in Brooklyn politics and the development of the borough. We finally have a, a speaker, Council Member Levin, who will close us out. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, my colleagues, I'm introducing uh, three pieces of legislation today. One, introduction uh, 1325, which would amend the administrative code uh, to allow for the authorization to create legal defense trusts um, in New York City. This is for public officials. Uh, if you recall, last year the Conflict of Interest Board came out with guidelines that said that, uh, that contributions to a legal defense trust um, were prohibited uh, over $50, um, which uh, essentially uh, renders moot any legal defense trust um, uh, uh, in New York City. And so this bill would allow for the creation of legal defense trust in the uh, unlikely and unfortunate event of anybody finding themselves um, as a public official under an investigation, whether they did something wrong or not, uh, but allowing for the opportunity for them to defend themselves. Um, there's a long history in many jurisdictions that allow for legal defense trust, and New York City should, uh, should follow that lead. And this bill creates a responsible, uh, transparent, and, um, and, and separate and apart distinct framework uh, from any other funds, any campaign funds or other funds, public funds, uh, to allow for uh, a legal defense. Um, in addition, I've introduced uh, Resolution 715 with Councilmember Barry Grudenchik uh, to pass legislation, resolution to call on Congress to, uh, to pass legislation in response to the Reducing Poverty in America by Promoting Opportunities and Economic Mobility Executive Order, which was signed by the President in April of 2000. Um, uh, 18, uh, which is uh, very detrimental, and it's important that we stand up strong and say in New York City that we support our social safety net. Um, in addition, uh, uh, with colleagues uh, Traeger, Cumbo, Levine, uh, Rivera, Amphrey Samuel, Chin, and Ayala, um, creating uh, a client of the Department of Education to implement the recommendations for the Mayor's Sexual Health Education Task Force. And lastly, I just want to uh, say a quick uh, word about my friend Nicholas Hayward, Sr., uh, who passed away last week. Nicholas Hayward lost his son, uh, Nicholas Naquan Hayward Jr., uh, to police violence in 1994. Nick Hayward has been a leader in our communities uh, for over 20 years, um, uh, calling attention uh, to, uh, to police violence 
and the devastating consequences of police violence, and, uh, but he always was um, a, uh, such a, a, a remarkably um, uh, dignified and kind uh, and gentle uh, person who spoke truth to power um, from, a, from a position of, of deep righteousness. And uh, it was a, a, a privilege to be able to know him and to work with him. And um, I wish uh, his family and all that he touched uh, a, uh, my deepest condolences. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Levin. And we have been recently joined by Councilmember Ros Rosenthal. And we are going to have her vote. And then we're going to hear I, I, from. I want to, before we uh, let Councilmember Rosenthal vote, the rules of the council state that we have to ask for unanimous consent for that to happen. So I'm asking my colleagues for unanimous consent who are on the floor uh, for Councilmember Rosenthal to be able to cast votes today. Uh, seeing no objection from any colleagues, I believe we have unanimous consent. And I would ask uh, that Councilmember Rosenthal be called upon to cast votes today. Councilmember Rosenthal. I and all with gratitude. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. And now we will all be closed out. Oh, we will now redo the numbers. Um, all numbers on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 728B, we now have 46 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention. The revised land use call-ups vote is 48 in the affirmative and zero negative, and that concludes today's votes. We'll the now close out with Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The charter meeting of January 9th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you all.